You know, Pa, this is the first time in a long time I've seen you take a drink and look as if you really enjoy it. Yeah, I'll tell you something. It is the first time. The first time since... Since Burke Devlin came back to Collinsport. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> well, he's still here. I know, but, well, since the coroner decided poor Bill Malloy died accidentally, at least uh, people aren't going around suspecting other people of having a hand in his death. <laughs> Pop, nobody in his right mind could possibly think you had anything to do with it. You know that, Maggie, and I know it. But who can tell what other people are thinking? <laughs> Pop, you just tell me who and I'll put a hex on him. <laughs> when you have that look in your eyes, I believe you could do just that. There's a sad sack if I ever saw one. Who? Joe Haskell. He's the most alone man I've ever seen. Hey, Pop, go over and ask him to join us. Why not? Hi, Maggie. Hi, Joe. Thanks for saving my life. Hey, what happened? Did you get stood up? Yeah. I thought I had a dinner date. The lady thought otherwise. <laughs> it happens in the best of families. Oh, believe me, this is the best family. The best family in Collinsport, anyway. Well, it uh, is faintly possible that you're referring to the Collins family of Collinsport. Hmm? It's possible. Fine. Then let's drink to the Collins family of uh -huh. Collinsport. Let's go. You know, in a way, it's my fault. Carolyn got this brainstorm. Earlier today, she wanted me to take the afternoon off and drive with her out to the beach. Oh, I wish somebody had asked me. I've gone like a shot. You mean you didn't jump when you were commanded by a member of the Collins family of Collins Boy? Uh -oh. Hey! Toast again. <laughs> no, you see, I got this silly notion that I have a job I'm supposed to be working at. That's integrity, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, speaking of jobs, who's going to get Bill Malloy's job? You? <laughs> I'm about 86 in line for Mr. Malloy's job. Yeah, but you've got one thing in your favor that they haven't. Carolyn. And uh, she is a member of the Collins family of uh, Collins. Oh, oh, there it is again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Oh, that reminds me. I should call up there again. Excuse me? <clears throat> He's a nice lad. Yes, he is. Yeah, now. You're not uh, thinking of... Uh... There's no harm in thinking, is there? Well, I, I wouldn't want to see you get hurt, Maggie. Hello? Oh, uh, hello, this is Joe Haskell. Oh, hi, Joe. Oh, hi, Vicki. Uh, listen, is Carolyn there? No, she went out for a drive. Oh, did she say where she was going? No, she didn't. Well, did, uh, did she say anything about... I mean, do you think she was still sore at me about this afternoon? She never said anything about that. Well, you know what you... Joe, I'm afraid I'm not being any help to you at all. Oh, well, it's not your fault, Vicky. Listen, uh, if you see her, tell her I called, will you? I will. Bye-bye. Bye. Ah, -bye. Oh, well. Hey, no luck? Nope, she wasn't there. You know, Joe, if all you think about is uh, Caroline, you'll, uh, if you think very much about her, you'll get her out of Collinwood. Ah, uh, but how? It's easier said than done. Well, do you want to uh, sit back and watch her grow old gracefully up in that mausoleum the way her mother has? No, certainly not. Well, then you better do something about it. Otherwise, that's exactly what's going to happen. You know, I think you ought to change your tactics, Joe. Try something new. Maybe what I should really try is a new girl. You want to dance? 
Me? Well, not your father. <laughs> I'd love to. Tonight we'll forget all about the Collins family of Collinsport. And I'll drink to that. <laughs> You don't remember that? No. no, but I'll never forget the day that you intercepted that pass for, in the last minute oh, of the game. Oh, boy, game. You ran 65 yards for a touchdown. Were you there? Was I there? Who do you think was leading all the cheers? Uh -huh. Of course I was there. And you know the final score. Okay, so we lost 35 to 6. <laughs> you still scored the six points, didn't you? Oh, I certainly did. I think it's probably the last time I ever scored in my life. <laughs> hey, Pop, did you ever play football? Well, in uh, my time, my day, it was a game, not a profession. I never had time for games. You know, sometimes I think your whole life has been a big game. Until recently. Oh, come on now. In a minute, you're going to start thinking about the, the Collins of Collins Paul. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of that... Here we are, my dear. Absolutely the best seat in the house. Thank you. That's something new, isn't it? Yes, I didn't know they were that close. Yeah, well, uh, maybe we should ask them to join us. Oh, no. Oh, well, never mind what I thought. To tell you the truth, there's something I would like to ask Collins, and uh, this seems like a good a time as any. Hey, Pop, tonight we weren't going to have any worries. You won't take a minute. Wait till you try the steam machine. They're the best in this Hello, market. Mr. Evans. Good evening. Hello, Evans. I uh, thought maybe you might like to join us. Oh, really, Evans? It's taken me all this time to get Vicky out on the town, and now you want to break up our tete-a-tete. -tete. There's uh, something I have to say to you, <laughs> privately. I don't mind, Roger. I'll join Maggie and Joe. <laughs> well, if it would please you, I'll join you in a minute. Good. Oh, hi. Hi. Sit down. Didn't Carolyn say anything about our, our, our dinner date tonight? No, she just said she was going for a drive. She had something on her mind, though. I know that. What's this I hear about Mrs. Stoddard hiring a housekeeper? Yeah, they haven't had any help in, up there since, uh, well, ever since I can remember. Well, it's true. She's going to hire Mrs. Johnson, who was Bill Malloy's housekeeper. I don't know why, but that woman gives me the creeps. Well, I think it's a very nice gesture on Mrs. Stoddard's part. And she's not going to take your job, is she? No. Well, at least I think not. <laughs> Mrs. Stoddard's been awfully nice to me. She really has. Well, she and Carolyn are a bit alike in some ways, so... You never know from one minute to the next what kind of a mood they're going to be in. Oh, yeah, don't I know that. Hey, is Carolyn changeable to you, too? Well, we've had our fight. About what? Nothing important. Oh. You know, I'll bet she's jealous of you. She has no right to be. No, I'll bet she's jealous of you because Burke seems to like you. Oh, you're on old ground, Maggie. Carolyn's not fascinated by Burke Devlin anymore. He's right. Joe Haskell, you're sweet, but you're a dope. Maybe I'm not wanted here anymore. <laughs> of course you are. Oh, sit down and behave yourself. Hey, you forgot. The Collins family oh. of Collinsport. Don't get up, Haskell. Miss Winters and I were just leaving. I'm sorry, Vicky. I've developed a splitting headache. Oh, I'm sorry. I hate to tear you away from such fascinating company. Oh, that's all right. Oh, no doubt. You were discussing the uh, price of fish or the price of hash? Roger. I'm sorry. I, as I said, I have a headache. A uh, headache doesn't give you the right to insult Maggie. Aren't you forgetting yourself, Haskell? Oh, maybe I'm just remembering. Forget it, Joe. It doesn't matter. I think it does matter. I have already apologized. Well, your apology was worse than the statement you made. Don't presume to teach me manners, young man. Well, somebody should. Roger, please, let's go. Yes, I think we'd better go. I never did enjoy gutter brawling. Well, then why don't you get up out of the gutter, then? Now, listen. What's this all about? It's nothing, Pop. It doesn't concern you. I think it concerns all of us. Joe, I said forget it. Roger, please, let's go. Good night. 
was uh, Roger being his usual charming self. Oh, he was shooting his mouth. Yeah. He has a habit of doing that. Yeah, somebody's going to break his jaw one of these days. Hey, wait a minute. You're talking about your girlfriend's uncle. And don't forget the Collins of Collinsport. Come on. More coffee, Pop? Hmm? No, thanks. Have well, you been busy this morning? Oh, same as usual. Hmm. Are your customers still talking about Bill Malloy's death? Not so much. The coroner's report seems to have stopped most of it. Now they're back to, back to fishing and football. Hmm. They forget so easily. Why don't you forget about it too, Pop? It's not doing you any good to keep thinking about it. Hmm. I know. You know, I thought once we got that report, your worries would be over. Well, what do you mean by that? What makes you think I was worried about the report? What makes you think no that? No reason, but you were. Well, I'm not now. I never really even gave it a thought. Not a thought. Okay. See, did your meeting with Roger Collins last night in the Blue Whale have anything to do with your... your being not so nervous? No, of course not. What were the two of you talking about? For a minute, you looked as thick as thieves. Nothing important. Oh, come on now. When Roger came over to our table, he looked like he'd been stung by a bee. You're imagining things. See, I know what it was. You and Rog robbed a bank, and now you're arguing about how to split the loot. It's none of your business. Maggie, I, I didn't mean that. I, I, I haven't been myself lately. That's what I've been wondering about, Pop. If you're not yourself, then who are you? Pop, if you don't talk to me, I'm going to start making you pay for your breakfast. Okay. How much? I was kidding. Pop, you used to be able to see through my jokes before I even made them. Uh -huh. Maybe I'm getting old. Oh, you're still a young man. It's just that you act childish. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Johnson. You want to see a menu? No, thanks. Oh, that's too bad. I typed these out myself, and I'm kind of proud of them. Not one single typographical error. Well, I'll have uh, vegetable juice and uh, whole wheat toast well done. I'll butter it myself. And uh, coffee. Coming right up. <sighs> She's a bundle of laughs. Well, why should she be? Do you think I ought to mention anything to her about Carolyn wanting Mrs. Stoddard to hire her as a housekeeper? No, I don't. What goes on up in Collinswood is none of our business. Right. You know, I don't trust her. Why not? I don't know, just female intuition, I think. No. Morning, Maggie. Good morning, Bert. Do you want some coffee? Yes, thank you. How are you, Sam? Fine, Burke. You? Wouldn't be better. Mm -hmm. Suppose you're happy about the verdict our coroner arrived at? It was the only possible one. Eh, maybe you're right, but I don't think so. Burke. Nobody had anything to do with Bill Malloy's death. Oh, yes. Someone had something to do with it. And that someone is standing right there. Burke Devlin. I'm saying that Burke Devlin is responsible for Mr. Malloy being dead. Now, wait a minute. Oh, I don't say you drowned him. But if you hadn't come back to Collinsport, Mr. Malloy would still be alive. Come back to Collinsport and stirring up all that mess about an accident ten years ago got Mr. Malloy so upset he didn't know if he was coming or going. He was my friend. Well, that's a fine friend. Come to town and do everything you can to throw doubt and suspicion on everyone. It was you caused Mr. Malloy to have that accident and drown. And in your heart, you know it. That's not true. Burke didn't have anything to do with it. Now, wait a minute, Davy. Wait a minute. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Okay, Dave. All right. I appreciate your concern. Now, come on. I want to talk to you a minute. Out here. 
Mrs. Johnson, did you really mean that when you said that Burke was responsible for Bill Malloy's death? Well, not directly, but until Burke Devlin came to town, Mr. Malloy was a different man. Until Burke showed on the scene and began digging into all that past history. But Bill Malloy wasn't involved in any of that. It distressed Mrs. Stoddard, and that was enough to make Mr. Malloy involved. And he was determined to stop Burke. And you think that Burke stopped him? Well, no, I mean to say not directly. We have to accept the coroner's verdict on that. But I know that Mr. Malloy knew that shortcut by lookout point as well as he knew the back of his hand. If his mind hadn't been so distracted by Burke Devlin, he would never have lost his footing the way they say. You're absolutely right, Sam. I think it's Burke Devlin's nature to pry around and upset people. Maybe Burke was upset, too. Well, we'll have to learn to forget. Live and let live. That's exactly what I say. I'd like another piece of this toast. Hey, you like my cooking. Uh, but I'll have it over at this table here. I'm just not built for these stools. <laughs> uh. Maggie. I want you to watch your manners with her. She's gone through a lot lately. Okay, Pop. I guess I was a little harsh on her. She's all right. Mm. Now, I have to make a phone call. Who are you going <laughs> to... I'm sorry I said that, Pop. Johnson, I want to apologize for the way I acted. Well, that's perfectly all right, David. I wish you accept in the spirit in which it was tender. I do. And uh, perhaps I was harsh about uh, Mr. Devlin. You mean you apologize? I suppose so. Burke, she apologized to you. Well, that's fine. Thank you. Well, this calls for a little celebration. Yes, sir. The drinks are on me. Hot chocolate, Davy? Yeah, it's great. Coffee man? <laughs> well, if it isn't Joe Haskell, the big fish tycoon. Oh. oh, all right. The little fish tycoon. I forgot that the Collins cannery deals only in sardines. Little fish, Maggie, from which big money is made, and it's all poured into a, a dead castle on a dead hill. Hey, this is one of your bitter days. Something's missing. You're right. Common sense. <laughs> oh, from this. Coffee cup without a saucer. Oh. Not possible. So I'm a terrible, terrible waiter. There you go, ma'am. Joe Haskell at your service. Hey, you better not let Carolyn Stoddard hear you say that. At this moment, she couldn't care less. And she's the one without any common sense. You know what she said to me today, Maggie? She said, don't ever speak to me again. Mm. And she meant it. Sure, for about five or ten minutes. How's the job coming along? Oh, okay. I was offered a promotion today. You were? Hey, that's great. Turned it down. Well, I guess you had your reasons. Yep. Let me guess. Mrs. Stoddard offered you a better job at the cannery, and you turned it down because you want to buy your own fishing boat and be independent, right? You think I'm crazy? Not if it's what you really want. You know, you think after all this time that Carolyn would understand how I felt. After all, I've been talking about this boat for, for years. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, like some brand new thing to her. 
she angry because you turned down the job? That's what she said. If you want to be independent, be independent without me. Or something like that. Maggie, you know, I just don't think that Carolyn and I are ever going to understand each other. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm better off recognizing it now. But you love her, Joe. How can I love her? I, I don't even know what she is from one day to the next. Maggie, what do you think I ought to do? <laughs> well, there are a couple of things you can do. A, you can beat her over the head and force her to marry you. Or B, you can sit in your room and sulk. Or C, you can find yourself a new girl. <laughs> I'll put a donut to go with the coffee. You know what you are, Joe. The white knight of Collinsport, determined to save the beautiful princess from the dungeon. Uh, only trouble is, she, she doesn't want to be saved. <laughs> well, then the beautiful princess is, if you'll excuse the expression, off her rocker. Ah, uh, confused. Ah, uh, off her rocker. She wants to stay up in Collinwood? That's not confused. You know, the one time I went up there, I felt like there were about a hundred ghosts all around me. And all I saw was the entrance hall and the drawing room. Uh, you ought to see the, the other parts of it, especially the one that's closed off. Have you ever been in there? No, 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 nobody goes in there. But I have heard that it's, it's full of ghosts, loaded with them. You know, I believe you. Yes, it's musty and spooky. And it's filled with little uh, blind alleys and dark corridors and rooms that are closed up. And uh, dead people that never speak. Hey, cut it out there, Joe. You're going to make me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll tell you something. If I had my choice between that big old house and, and the little cottage that Pop and I have, I'd take the little cottage that Pop and I have. Okay. Oh, you got a customer. I got to get going anyway. Hey, Joe. I just had an idea. How about taking Pop luck with my dad and me tonight? I mean, if you haven't anything better planned. Thanks, Maggie, but... Well, I, I don't know whether I'm going to be free. Well, I'll be cooking dinner anyway, so... If you change your mind, why don't you just give me a call? Maybe I'll do that. Good. Well, Maggie, thanks for the use of the hall. Sounds like a Joseph Conrad story. How'd you get back, Joe? No, we didn't. Not that night. See, they cut the engines off and we just drifted. Some of us sang songs and the old men told their favorite stories. Of course, everybody had heard them a hundred times except me. Oh, I wish I'd been there. And then we all realized that uh, the silence had sort of crept up on us. The sea was calm again. It was starting to get light. And uh, so with the sun rising, of course, we got our bearings back and uh, returned to port about Oh, five in the afternoon. It's been quite a night. What a great adventure. Hey, how about another cup of coffee? Oh, sounds great. You know, Joe, we do have one thing in common. Well, what's that? Boats. Boats? What does a girl know about boats? <laughs> if I even start to talk to Carolyn about them, she gets seasick. Well, try me. All right. Why is a boat always called a she? Oh, Joe, that's easy. Because we're so unpredictable. It's like hurricanes. You never know which way we're going to turn. Very good. Very good, Miss Evans. I, uh, I got to admit, you seem to qualify as quite an expert on diesel engines. But now we get to something a little bit more difficult. Okay, proceed, Professor. Describe to me, if you can, the rigging of a schooner's sails. Well, first of all, the inner and outer jibs are sometimes fitted instead of a single jib. In that case, we have one flying jib, two jib, three four staysail, four foresail, four for gaff topsail, six main top mast staysail, seven mainsail, eight main gaff topsail. That's right. <laughs> Did I leave anything out? Well, I don't know. Uh, to be sure, I'd have to look it up myself. <laughs> Joe, what about your boat? The one you want to buy? Oh, well, most of the time I, 
I think that's just a dream of mine. Well, it's another year and a half yet before I'll even be able to make the down payment. Year and a half? I thought you were going into partnership with someone to get the boat. Yeah, but that fell through. You know, sometimes I could just kick my pop in the pants. What's your father got to do with it? Nothing. That's why I could kick him in the pants. <laughs> you see, about, about 10 years ago, Pop sold a bunch of paintings for $15,000. 15000 He blew every cent of it. But just think, if he'd saved even a part of that money, then, well, then we could have gone into partnership with you. Well, I gotta admit, you're a lot prettier than my ex-partner. You know what I'm gonna do? I mean, just because of what Pop did, I'm gonna snitch some of that fine old brandy he's been saving and lace this coffee the way it should be laced. Uh, that is, if you'll join me. Oh, I'll, I'll join you, all right. There's only one small problem. What's that? What'll you do with a drunken sailor? <laughs> What'll you do with a drunken oh, sailor? What'll you do with a drunken <laughs> sailor early in the morning? Wow, where'd the time ever get to? I think someone went into that brandy bottle. Oh, uh, listen, I, I gotta get home to hit the sack. Me too, except that I'm already home. Well, listen, before I go, let me first prove that I still have some manners. Thank you, Miss Evans, for a very great dinner. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well? I do have to be getting home. I also ought to thank you for the education you've given me on the subject of the rigging of sailing vessels. My pleasure. No, I bet it was. But it was a great <laughs> pleasure showing off all that knowledge to an ignorant lout like me. Oh, Joe, will you stop knocking yourself? You're not an ignorant lout, and you know it. Anybody who knows what he wants and goes after it isn't ignorant. It's us poor slobs that don't know what we want that are ignorant. Now who's knocking himself? Oh, I'm allowed two minutes of self-pity a day. <laughs> well, as I said, it is past my bedtime. Mine too. Well, thanks again for everything. Maybe another night, huh? Oh, you bet. Good night, Joe. Good night, Maggie. Good night, pal. Maggie, hi. Hello, Mr. Evans. Hello, Joe. Hi, Maggie. Well, uh, my daughter decided to accompany me on my nightly visit. Well, I'm surprised to see so many people out on a cold, blowy night like this. <laughs> I think cold, blowy nights are the best nights for having fun. Oh, you, you could be right. Well, if, if you'll excuse us. Oh, won't you join us? Well, no, please, we have plenty of room. Maggie? We don't want to intrude. You won't be intruding. Will they, Joe? No, of course not. <laughs> I love that dress, Maggie. Blue is such a becoming color on you. Thank you, Carolyn. You want to dance? Oh, I don't want to waste that dreamy music. Will you excuse us? Why'd you do that? Do what? Ask Maggie and her father to join us? I didn't think you'd object. I don't, but you're not answering my question. Well, in the first place, I was being polite. And in the second place, I want Maggie to know there are no hard feelings uh, about your date with her. Is that it? Of course. What is this, a cross-examination? Don't you believe me? Calm down, calm down. Yes, yes, I believe you. Penny, for your thoughts. Don't squander your money. <laughs> Does it uh, bother you, seeing them together? Don't be ridiculous. Of course it doesn't bother me. Well, I, I hope not. I, I wouldn't want you to waste your time waiting for something you'll probably never get. Darling, there comes a time when you've got to bow to the inevitable. Pop, just this once, will you spare me your wise old sayings? I told you I'm fine, and I am. 
And let's just drop the subject. Whatever you say. Remember when we used to take long walks all the way up to Eagle Point? Now we haven't done that in a long time, not since we were in high school. I know. But we should again soon. Maybe Sunday. Okay, if you want. Well, I've got to be going. Oh, so early. Well, 6.30, I have to open up the coffee shop. Wait a minute, Maggie. I'll, I'll walk you home. It's a bad night, and I wouldn't want to see you going home by yourself. Pop, I'm a big girl. I can take care of myself. Well, anyway, I'd feel safer if I knew you were home safe. I'd feel a lot better about it. So, uh, let's have one more drink, and then we'll be on our way, huh? Okay, but just one. Waiter. By the way, where's Vicky? She hasn't stopped by the hotel for a few days. Yeah, and I haven't seen her when I've come to pick you up. She gone into hiding? Oh, haven't you heard? She's gone to Bangor. That's odd. Odd? Well, I saw her a few days ago, and she didn't mention a trip to Bangor. Oh, well, it came up suddenly. She decided she wanted to get away from Collinwood. It's probably a good thing. Sounds like she needs a rest. What do you mean? Vicky claims to have seen a ghost. A ghost? Bill Malloy's ghost. Malloy? That's right. She even claims it talked to her. That doesn't sound like Vicky. No, that's, I agree. That's why I said she probably needs a rest. <laughs> she probably had this terrible nightmare, and now she's believing it actually happened. Well, uh, where did she see this, um, this thing? In Collinwood. And then what, what did it say to her? Oh, Pop, you sound as if she saw something real. You don't believe in the boogeyman, do you? No, 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 but uh, just out of curiosity, what did it say? To stay away from Collinwood, that she was in danger there. That's all? That's all she told me. I see. Well, maybe she does need a rest. How many days does she plan to stay in Bangor? I don't know. A few. But won't she be lonesome in a strange city all by herself? She's not alone. She's very definitely not alone. I didn't know she had friends in Bangor. She hasn't. I don't understand. She went there with a friend. A, a very intimate friend. Anyone I know? Burke Devlin. Burke? You didn't tell me that. The subject never came up. Well, then, what's she doing in Bangor with Burke Devlin? I don't know. Ask Vicky. Well, let's dance. And not right now, Joe. I'm not in the mood. I am. Come on, let's dance. All right. You didn't have to bark at me. You must take me for a prize sap. What's that supposed to mean? You don't think I know why you called me tonight? I told you why. Several times to be exact. Because I wanted to see you. You're lying. What? I said you were lying. You called me for the same reason you called me before, because you're jealous of Vicki and Burke. That is ridiculous. I don't think so. You may not believe this, Carolyn, but I, I do have eyes and ears. I know what's going on. You can't call me a liar, Joe Haskell. You or anybody else. You can't expect me to come crawling back every time Devlin isn't around. Now, you better start understanding that right now. All right, I've heard enough. Take me home. Not until you listen to what I've had to, have to say, and I've if got If you plenty. don't take me home, I'm going to walk. Waiter. Pop, you promised me that would be your last. Next to last. This this will be the last one. You said that three drinks ago. Oh, I give up. No, oh, Maggie, I, I, I really need it. I, I need it very badly right now. Why right now? Because of ghoulies and ghosties and long-legged beasties and things that go bump in the night. <laughs> you must be loaded. Oh, no, not yet, not yet. Well, don't talk that way. You make me nervous. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Do you mind if I sit down? Of course not. Is Carolyn all right? She's home, if that's what you mean. Oh, uh, speaking of home, Joe, would, 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 would you mind seeing Maggie home? Oh, Pop. Couldn't mind anything less. 
I thought you were going to walk me home. Well, I um, I want to take a long walk, and uh, I, I I won't be home till quite late. Good night, Mr. Evans. Bob. Hi, Maggie. <laughs> Well, Pop's nothing if he's not unpredictable. I'm sorry I got foisted off on you. Oh, listen, do you hear me complaining? Well, you should. I'm the best judge of that. Well, why don't you tell me some more about your boat, Joe? The one you plan to buy. You're a nice girl, Maggie Evans. What brought that on? Well, you haven't asked me what happened between Carolyn and myself. I figured you'd tell me if you wanted me to know. You're right. Do you mind one question? What's that? Why did you come back? For a brush up. A what? The lesson you were giving me the other evening. I need to brush up on my knowledge of sea craft. Come on now, Professor. See if you can do this now. <laughs> Name for me all the sails of a full rigged <laughs> ship all, under all planes. Okay. One flying jib, two jib. Three, oh. four top mast, staysail, <laughs> four, foresail, five, four gap top mast.